Good afternoon, everyone. While everyone is getting settled, we're moving people in from the waiting room and we appreciate your patience. Today's program will begin in just a moment. All right, it looks like everyone is in. Welcome to, the, to today's program, DEI Taking Action, focusing focus on mentoring and engaging. Before we begin, we do have a few announcements to make regarding CPE credit. Today's program is worth 1.5 CPE credits and to be eligible for that, you need to answer five of the six polling questions presented during the webinar and be present for 75 minutes. CPE will be available in seven to 10 business days. And if you've all been on a webinar, you know the rules, 50 minute hour, technical difficulties. Please include um, answers to any polls in the chat if you have difficulty with the pollings. And um, as it is right now, I will put up the first poll and you all know what the first poll is. If you need CPE credit, please answer yes. And we will make sure that you get it. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Judy Wright. Judy Wright is the Diversity and Inclusion Chair at the FEI Twin Cities Chapter and is here to introduce our program and panelists. Welcome, Judy. Thank you, Nancy. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, as, F as FEI strive to be a diversity and inclusive community of uh, financial leaders, we would like to share some progress we made nationally and locally. Um, nationally, we have a DEI committee and we partnered with National Association of Black Accountants, uh, as NAPA, to offer our support through mentorship to the college students. And I'm, pr I'm proud to announce that right now we have five NAPA students from various colleges here in Minnesota that mentor our uh, chapter FEI members um, board of directors and our strategic partners. Today we will be able to hear more from our speaker, Herschel Fierson, uh, which he will be in our second part of the webinar today. Um, also, we, our chapter uh, had a, a various uh, um, FEI events and that including we had unconscious bias training for our board of directors. Last few months, we had several events, some highlights including President from Chambers of Commerce of Minneapolis uh, talk about minority businesses and the founder and the CEO from uh, Center of In Economic Inclusion, Tawana Black, talk about the key indicators of uh, inclusive economy and how companies can take action through DI efforts. Recently, we also partnered with the Minority Business Growth Alliance, uh, our organization organization who support minority businesses through pro bono um, consulting and services. We'll hear from them today as well. Um, we are honored to have several, several distinguished guests from uh, NAPA and MBGA to talk about their organizations today and how you can be involved. And our own FEI members will also talk about their mentorship experience. Um, please note, we will have Q&A sessions at the end of our webinar, so make sure you send your questions through the chat during the session, and we'll get back to you later. Without further ado, let me introduce Mary Rappaport, the founder and the chief, insp I'm, excuse me, chief inspire from Minority Business Growth Alliance. Mary, take it over. Well, thank you so much. And as I said before, thank you so much for um, uh, including us and allowing us to, to tell our story and, and introduce the audience to our organization. Um, if you can let me share my screen here, I will, I've got a few slides uh, that, that I think can uh, help us just walk through uh, who we're doing. We're delighted to be here. I'm here with my colleague, Damian Hanft, uh, who is our treasurer and our vice chair. Um, and he will also be available to ask, answer questions. And um, one of our clients will be featured, Tito, uh, Tito Wilson's here and there he is, I see him. Uh, and so you'll be able to hear from him about his experience. So uh, let me just tell you a little bit about who we are and, and what we do. And my goal here is to get you excited and hope that you wanna be engaged and give you some ways to do that, that fit with your schedule, with your, uh, with your goals and with your engagement uh, appetite. 
Um, we are, um, as Judy said, we are a, an organization and our goal is to build greater understanding between communities and cultures. And we do that through pro bono consulting and services. And we focus on working with minority owned uh, businesses and, and, and owners of those minority businesses. We work with them to help them grow their capabilities in every functional area. So it could be marketing. We're excited about working with FEI and partnering with you for financial uh, connections, for guidance, for coaching, um, accountants. Uh, we have operations expertise and, and these businesses need all of that. So our goal is to connect people, to have a real uh, impact experience and help minority business owners to thrive. Um, the way this started was uh, like, like everyone, and, and especially back in the news uh, again today, um, I was really impacted personally, um, my feelings about what was going on with the George Floyd uh, killing um, and just watching the reaction across the nation, actually across the globe, um, and feeling like I really, really wanted to do something um, I had some experiences um, in volunteer capacities and as, as uh, you know, having these organizations for clients as well um, to uh, build education programs and work with minority business owners um, in through Women Venture and through Black Women's Wealth Alliance here in the Twin Cities. And it really um, it had a big impact on me. Um, and when I thought about how did I want to give back and how could people give back um, that maybe I were looking for ways to do that, um, I put a little post on my LinkedIn feed and said, hey, I, this is crazy, um, but look at these businesses and they're going to need some help um, at some point when things settle down. Um, I'd like to do something. I don't exactly know what that is. If you're interested, please join us and please, uh, please let me know and we'll figure it out together. And I wound up getting about 50 people. Some of them were people I knew and some of them were people I didn't know that other people had encouraged um, to connect. Uh, and, and together uh, alongside uh, some really committed and motivated people, we formed a 501c3 um, and it's Minority Business Growth Alliance. And we are committed to working with minority business owners in the spirit of serving. Uh, we, it's very important to us that we don't show up as, you know, uh, the smart white people that are going to help save minority people. Um, when you engage with us as a volunteer, you're really expected to help and put yourself in a service position. And that's a really high value that we have. And that's how we recruit for participants. And that's what we want to communicate to our clients as well. We're not here to save anyone. We're here to help in the way that the minority business owner wants to grow. So we provide two things. We, we provide services to these minority owned companies, but we also provide um, white people with a chance to connect with people who are not white. Um, chance to sit alongside a business owner, solve some problems. I know that I have made some really powerful connections personally and professionally, just by sitting down alongside someone and helping to solve a really critical problem. Um, and so this is also uh, how we believe we are helping uh, to connect people, give them really um, impactful ways to give back and get involved. Um, our capabilities, we have every functional area we try to get. Um, we like to partner with organizations like FEI and the members because we feel uh, that that's, uh, we don't even know the questions often to ask when we come across a client who needs uh, finance or accounting help. So we're really looking for organizations like FEI to help us figure out how do we understand what their needs are and how do we match them with the expertise. And we're hoping that if you're on this call today or you're watching this recording, that this might interest you and you might be interested in helping and working alongside one of our business uh, owners. Um, we'll also provide strategic guidance. So we help the business owner build a plan and solve problems and learn to grow uh, and build that execution plan um, with them and also jump in and do some of the work. Uh, these companies, uh, these owners are really very talented. They're very motivated and they already often know what they need to do. Um, they sometimes just don't have the resources to get it done. And so part of serving is really actually doing and not just coming in and saying, here are all the things you should do, call me when they're done. 
uh, you're expected to really get involved and learn the business and help. And I'll tell you a little bit about what that looks like uh, later on in the presentation. We also have a vision to start offering uh, business acumen or business related learning events to our clients. So that might mean a QuickBooks uh, workshop in this kit in this, or thinking about when do I finance something and when do I uh, just pay for it out of the business, how to make some of those strategic financial decisions. Um, those would be examples of, for this audience, some of the content that we'd love to be able to offer to our clients. And also networking and introductions. Um, we, um, I don't know, personally, I've grown my business, my own business. I've grown um, this business and helped to get the word out strictly through networking and, and talking about uh, the stories and the resources that we have. So one of the very valuable things we believe that our volunteers can, can do for the minority business owners is to open up their network and make connections and, and listen to what they need to go, you know, I know someone that's done this, or I know someone who really might be able to help you with this, or I know who you should meet. Uh, and those can include um, professional colleagues, they can include bankers and lawyers and all sorts of different resources. This is where we lend our privilege and, and really opening up all of the resources that, um, that we can to help minority business owners. So that's what we really look for and that's what we want to offer. We work as much as we can through partnerships. And so these are some organizations um, that have been working with us and partnering with us. Um, Minnesota Black Chamber offered uh, up their clientele as one of our first cohorts. And I'll tell you about that in a minute. We work with Legal Corps because their whole mission is to connect uh, entrepreneurs with non-litigation legal services. Creatus is a creative agency and they've been, uh, they, they've been willing to lend their creative talent to work with some of our business owners. Novus is a media agency and they're, uh, they're interested in helping to teach some digital marketing We've just connected with Baker Tilly and their DNI team, and they're looking to send us volunteers. Ecolab, we're talking to them with their ERG uh, groups and finding really approved and great ways to channel uh, their employees to get engaged uh, with, uh, with uh, minority communities and to give back. And then, of course, we're hoping that today, as a result of this presentation uh, and FEI, you, you guys uh, look for opportunities to get engaged as well. So um, those are our partners uh, to date and we look forward to building many, many more. Um, perfect time, excuse me, Mary, perfect sure. time for, to launch our second poll for our audience, this thought provoking poll. In the past, as awareness of systematic racism has been increasing, you are looking for the right way to give back and get involved. You're currently involved in this issue as a volunteer in other capacity not planning to participate in a volunteer or give back capacity. That's great. Thank it's you, a folks. great time to stop. And I'd love to see the results once you get that. Because Absolutely. We'll it's give a, you it's, folks just a few more seconds uh, for those of you who are interested in CPE credit. Feel free to answer even if you're not getting credit. It, um, these thought-provoking polls do help out through the conversation. Yeah, part of, part, thank you for that. Part of, part of our mission really is to help people find really um, thought-provoking ways to get involved with the issues, um, ways to be able to give and participate that not only have impact in terms of economic impact, but also personal impact. And it looks like 64% uh, of you are already involved and thank you for that. Very glad to see that. But there's also a good portion of you that are looking for new ways to get involved. And maybe between uh, the two of us, uh, our organizations today, you'll, you'll maybe find one and you'll be able to, uh, to see that. So this is just a snapshot of the, the skill sets that we've been able to attract uh, to date as part of the volunteer uh, effort. And it's everywhere. We were so thrilled and so happy to get um, such remarkable talent in every area. Um, and so we, we look forward to adding your talent to, uh, to this list and to our poll. 
And I just quickly wanted to talk about what our current co cohort looks like. Uh, we like to work with cohorts because we like to bring people together who are entrepreneurs. Um, if you've been an, if you're an entrepreneur, if you've been an entrepreneur, sometimes you know that can be kind of a lonely situation. You sort of feel isolated. Uh, is everybody else having this challenge? We want to bring people together, and so these are some of the businesses and some of the people that we sit down and we work with, and we help um, and connect them to resources, connect them to. Um, guidance, connect them to coaching and skills. And Tito here is going to be uh, talking about um, his experience working with us from Wilson's Image, which is a skincare line. Um, and he'll be able to tell us a little bit about his business and his experience uh, working with us. So I'm going to pass it over to Tito. Uh, and Tito, maybe you could just say a little bit about what it is that your business does, a kind of how it's been to work with us and and, um, and, and all of that. Okay, great, great. Thanks, thanks, Mary. Uh, Wilson's Image <clears throat> is actually barbershop. Wilson's Image Barbers and Stylists is the name of uh, my barbershop that I run full time. Uh, along with, uh, well, I've been, I've, I've been in that business for 14 years now. It's located uh, in, in the Twin Cities, North Minneapolis. Uh, like I said, I've been in business for 14 years, just right here, kind of like in the heart of uh, inner city. Um, a couple years ago, I started, uh, well, I have, I have two other businesses that are linked. A couple years ago, I started in a uh, apparel line um, and, you know, just an apparel line where, you know, I have a couple logos that we attach to hats, t-shirts, jogging suits, hoodies, you know, you, you name it, just kind of whatever whatever we see is fashionable and nice, you know, we, we provide it uh, for customers. About a year and a half ago, uh, I started a skincare line. It's called Image Renewal Organics. And <clears throat> with that business, I feature uh, about four different products now. Uh, it's a, a body butter with a shea butter formulation. And I have like uh, seven different fragrances, seven different custom fragrances and one plain also have uh, in that line a uh, beard oil, hair and scalp oil, and a fascia bar. <clears throat> and these are all natural organic uh, products. Um, another thing that I do is I, I have uh, started a scholarship for African-American inner city uh, scholars going off to school for their first and second year. We started that back in 2018. The goal really was to just give, give uh, a thousand dollars out of my pocket to two inner city uh, uh, African American scholars. Word got out about that, and then uh, you know community started to make donations. People outside of the community started to make donations, and since then, so we just gave out last uh, fall. We just gave out it's our third round of scholarships, and so to date, we've given about ten thousand dollars to uh, nine different African American scholars. So that's a little bit about my businesses and things I do. But my initial hearing about the MD, MBGA came last fall, literally a little bit, I think a month or two after the, uh, the murder of George Floyd. Mm -hmm. Carl Benson, the former president of the Minnesota Black Chamber of Commerce, connected with myself and the other talented business owners that are uh, now part of this cohort. He asked if we were willing to be uh, partners with a group of white professionals, you know, that's kind of the way he, he really brought it to us and said, hey, you know, um, group of, of, of white professionals reach out to me and they want to know if they can offer services to kind of help help uh, our businesses grow. So initially, I'm going to tell you, I was curious and I was skeptically <laughs> optimistic. But, you know, I have been kind of juggling in my mind different ways of, of growing my business, kind of like Mary said earlier, like, you know, being an entrepreneur, sometimes you can feel like an island out there, you know what I mean? So trying to figure out, you know, what the various things that I do, you know, I really needed some help. So I kind of looked at the list of services and, and uh, uh, things that, that, you know, they said that they could uh, help out with. So I agree, I agreed to be a part of the cohort. And then uh, we had our initial Zoom meeting with Mary and some other uh, members of the group. And we got a chance to hear about their desires to help black businesses, you know, to find out what that was all about. Um, but, and, and I said to Mary and the other people that were on the call, 
that day I said, you know, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to, you know, you know, have an opportunity to take advantage of some of these services. But, you know, I didn't want for myself or any of the other businesses to be beholding, you know, if we're going to if we're going to, you know, take part in and get these services provided. So, you know, Mary, she assured me that, you know, hey, there's there's no strings attached We're really here just to help. You know, we want to be able to offer offer services and guidance and things that, you know, we that the businesses that are you know, a part of the cohort may not otherwise have uh, access to. So I said, cool, you know, and the other other people, you know, the other businesses, they, they all joined as well. I'm connected with uh, my business consultant. Her name is Katie Walter, and she has been absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. She's all, always available when I have questions, concerns, or ideas. She shares her ideas. And most importantly, she's tapped into her pool of resource. This is what Mary was talking about also. She's tapped into her pool of resources that have shared so much information and insight on various ways to grow and move my business forward. To date, I've connected with a, a trademark attorney and we're, we're kind of like in the middle process of uh, finishing uh, getting my logos trademarked. Pro bono, very, very good. Um, I've spoken with marketing and advertising uh, experts that work with major corporations like Target and Ulta and uh, I think Sephora, some, and some other, some other uh, big companies out there. And as, uh, yesterday, I spoke with two professionals, uh, one that works in labeling and branding and the other, um, she works, she has, she works for a firm that kind of helps like frame frame your story you know what I mean since I have like a, a multiple businesses and things that I do you know we want to put together a, a, a narrative to tell my story to be able to push it out uh so that was that was a conversation yesterday and actually this morning I spoke uh with a with another uh professional about uh putting together ads social media ads whether it's on Facebook Instagram LinkedIn or you know just different uh social media platforms so these, these are the things that, that uh, myself and Katie are currently working on. And Mary herself, she, she, she's fantastic. We've become great friends, <laughs> you know, and we got something cool coming up. I don't know if this is the time to talk about it, but uh, Mary, if, if, if you want to, we can. If not, we can just kind of hold that. Okay, well, I, I just talked about it. I'm going to be really brief. So I got, you know, I, I'm, I'm working on something here just in the, in the beginning stages of working on something here in, in my neighborhood. You know, like I said, I work and live in North Minneapolis. And, you know, there's, there's a problem going on here with, uh, there's a lack of development along this. I work, the, the street that I work on is called West Broadway Avenue. And it's a, it's a major business corridor. Throughout uh, West Broadway, there's a serious, serious need for redevelopment. I mean, you know, some of these buildings are, you know, are here and they look terrible. There's been no development. A lot of them are boarded up. Some of them are burnt out from the George Floyd uh, aftermath. And so, you know, it, it, it really bothers me to drive up and down West Broadway every day. Not, I'm not saying the whole entire corridor is bad, but there's definitely, definitely eyesores along West Broadway. And so my mission now, part of my mission is to turn things around, get some development here, get the people, you know, we have a lot of people, uh, oh, I'm sorry, a few people that own a lot of properties along West Broadway. And these people do not live in West, uh, um, live in North Minneapolis. They don't live, some of them don't live in uh, Minneapolis at all. They live in, you know, some of the suburbs or outer areas or whatever, but they come in, they buy up these properties, use them for inve investment, but they don't take any time to develop in, develop them and make them look good. So people that come into the city, they look at our properties and, you know, they just think that, you know, black folks don't care about the appearance and the upkeep in the community. And that's just not true. So to make a long story short, my mission now is to do something about it. So me, I had a conversation with Mary, uh, I think it was last week when we talked, Mary. Mm -hmm. And so she agreed to do a ride along with me because I just kind of want to open her eyes to some of the things that, that black people in this area 
deal with on a daily basis. You know, we're just going to kind of get into each other's world. So yeah. that's the short of the long of what, what we're doing. But uh, MBGA is a, is a great organization. I'm so happy to be partnered with them. You know, we've done a lot of work to this date, and I can't wait to see what actually comes about moving forward. And I agreed to be a part of the advisory board as well. So I'm looking forward to all the great things that's going to come from that. And I will, I will yield with that. <laughs> Thanks, Tito. Uh, we are so excited to work with Tito. Uh, you can feel his energy. He's involved in so much. He cares so much. Uh, and he challenges us. He challenges our, our point of view. He challenges our sincerity. He challenges us to show up and be real. And he's been a fantastic partner and client. And we've learned just as much uh, as he's learned uh, from us. So let me quickly just give you some uh some opportunities to um to volunteer if this is of interest to you uh we have got uh, various ways we know that your time is precious we know there's a lot of different things maybe you want to do if you'd like to volunteer we do have positions as business champions and they're strategists that work alongside the business owner and they shuttle in as as he was talking about tito was talking about katie they, they really learn the business and they say, um, let me connect you with this person. Let me connect you with that. And we as an organization help find those connections and those experts. But that business champion is really the one that makes probably the deepest connection with the minority business owner. If you've got an expert expertise in some functional area, which I think you all do here, um, we, we have opportunities for you to get involved at, at a project level with one of these minority business owners. Um, work on a project, sometimes they're two weeks, sometimes they're one week, sometimes it's once a month, uh, sometimes it's once a week. Uh, it all really depends on what you can do and what the challenge is. And so that's where you find some functional uh, points to connect. We're looking to build our own team. Uh, we, need, we need to build teams that work on fundraising, community outreach, volunteering. Uh, we really want to have some robust programming coming along as well. So those are ways that you can get involved and go to our website. And there's a link to, uh, to filling out application and letting us know what you're interested in doing. And then finally, it's my last slide, I promise. Um, if you want to support us in other ways besides volunteering, connect us, make some introductions. Uh, we are always looking for other nonprofit partners, especially those that bring together minority businesses because we'd like to build new cohorts. We'd like to build more cohorts of businesses uh, that we can really help. Um, if your company has a DNI leader, uh, connect us because we are starting to enter through that doorway and talk about ways that we can partner with organizations to have their uh, DNI programs uh, work with us in our organization. Follow our LinkedIn page. If you don't do anything else, we don't pay for advertising and we don't pay for marketing. So follow our LinkedIn page, share our posts, comment on our posts, like our posts. Uh, we're also on Facebook, so do all of that. We do have a GoFundMe and the link to that is on the website. That would be really great. That helps us with, we're, we're brand new organization. So we've got uh, some infrastructure costs that we're trying to build. And we're trying to, to determine how we can best use those funds to help uh, minority business owners. And then if you're an expert and you'd like to present uh, and talk about your topic of expertise, please, uh, please let us know. And uh, I'd be happy to set you up in that way as well. So I'm, at this point, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to pass this back to our uh, next presenter or to Judy, who maybe jumps in in between. Yep. Great. Thank you, Mary. Um, as Mary mentioned, there are multiple ways you can get uh, involved in uh, uh, to offering your uh, volunteering. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me and I'll help to connect you with Mary's group or um, one of our board members at FEI Twin City will help to connect. So next, let me introduce um, our uh, partnership with NAPA, and today we will have uh, the national chairman from NAPA, uh, Herschel Verison, and also we have Timmy Jenkins, the vice president of the NAPA chapter here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, we have uh, Alain O'Brien also available. So when you have questions, you know, feel free to put in the chat you know, box. Uh, you know, uh, let's in, let's welcome Herschel to get started to talk about the NAPA, the partnership and their organizations. Great, no, thank you so much, Judy. First and foremost, uh, I appreciate the, the opportunity 
Uh, a little bit about myself, Herschel first, and I am uh, based out of Indianapolis, Indiana. I know I'm not local, so please don't hold that against me. Um, the, the one thing I would like to say is, um, you know, the, the partnership and the relationship that keeps getting deeper and deeper with FEI is very special and, and the opportunity is endless. And, you know, first and foremost, Judy, thank you for your leadership not only locally, but what you're doing at a national level. I also saw uh, Ms. Sharada Sullivan is joining us as well, another FEI member. So I really appreciate both of you guys and not only helping with the partnership with NABA, but more importantly, your leadership uh, from a diversity, equity, and inclusion standpoint. So I'm gonna be real brief, just kind of talking about who NABA is, what our, match, what our mission is, uh, some local events that we do as well as national events and then talk about uh, how we partner with FEI and just the impact we're having, not on not only local levels, but more importantly, on, on a national level. So uh, the National Association of Black Accountants, we are a, a nonprofit membership uh, professional association, you know, similar to, to FEI. Uh, we're dedicated to bridging the opportunity gap for Black professionals in accounting and finance and related business professions. Uh, we here at NABA, um, we look to advance people's careers uh, through our mission from education. We provide a lot of CPE. So I'm gonna make sure after I talk a, a little bit about us to pause because I know how important that CPE being a fellow accountant. So that's important. Uh, we provide resources to our members, not only to our members, but to our corporate partners and to the profession itself, uh, making those connections uh, for professionals and student members as we talk about our model, lifting as we climb. And, and lifting as we climb is very important for me personally. Um, uh, additional information about myself is, as Judy said, I'm the 27th chairman uh, of the board of directors for, for NABA, National Association of Black Accountants. Uh, my full-time paid job is uh, I am a newly elected partner uh, at Crow LLP. I call myself a unicorn uh, in the accounting space because I've been with Crow uh, ever since I graduated from college. So you're probably looking at me and say, wow, you know, uh, he started with the firm when he was two years old. Uh, I'm 25 years into it now. So yes, you know, I'm the youngest partner elect that you've ever met. Um, I want to pause there. Do we need to, to throw up a poll? I just want to make sure I give space to make sure we get the polls in to get CPE. So are we good to, Thank to you. move on? Thank you so much, Herschel. I'm having a technical issue with the polls. I've launched um, the third poll while you were being introduced and it failed. Okay. So um, for those participants on the call who are interested in CPE, you need to enter the answer in the chat box for me. And the question is, how familiar are you with National Association of Black Accountants Incorporated or as NASBA? NABA, excuse me. Um, you're very familiar, you're somewhat familiar, or you've never heard of it. And we do apologize. Technical issues do happen, and we are experiencing that now. Yeah, no worries, no worries. I think we all can appreciate and the technology space that we're in. Uh, I, I say it's not normal if I jump on a Zoom call and see a two-year-old or, or a someone's family pet going in the background. So that is the, <laughs> the space that we're in now. If we can go on to the, the next slide. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Orlando. Appreciate it. So the mission of NABA, right, is important is to address the professional needs of our members and to build leaders that shape the future uh, of the accounting and finance profession with an unfaltering commitment to empower the same in their successors. So, you, you know, I look at it like this. I want more people that look like me in a profession. Um, there is so much more that needs to be done in our great profession, a profession that I, I fell in love with. You know, I majored in accounting uh, at college. I actually took two years in high school and, you know, have not seen a lot of people that look like me in a profession. And still to this day, there's still not a lot. So that's why the partnership that we're having with FEI is important on two fronts. One is for uh, FEI members to get to know NABA, but more importantly for NABA members to get to know uh, more about FEI. I I'm happy to say I am a new FEI member. I'm very proud of that. So uh, I am now a part of the FEI family. So really honored to be a part of that. If you want to go on to the next slide, please. 
Uh, just a kind of brief history about NABA and, and once again, why it means so much to me on a personal level is, um, as you can see here, these gentlemen, which are, you know, many of the, the gentlemen are still living. These are the founders of NABA. We are over 50 years old. Once again, a global uh, organization. Uh, it was founded in, in New York, uh, where these gentlemen did not see, once again, a lot of people that look like them, more specifically CPAs. Uh, in the profession. And at the time, there was only, as, as we show here, only 136 African-Americans uh, CPAs in the profession. So they decided to come together in New York to form this thing called NABA. And look where we're at today. You know, we are making impact uh, in various communities, uh, creating new CPAs, uh, creating new leaders. We have, and I'll get into a little bit later, we have over 50 plus professional chapters across the country and over 50, 155, let me say it again, over 155 student chapters uh, throughout the country. And that's where we're gonna kind of get into the mentoring and working with FEI. Uh, if we can go to the next slide, just wanna highlight some of the programs we have. So this is a, a very unique program that we have for, um, it's called ACAP. Accounting Career Awareness Program. One of the things that we at NABA recognized years ago was that, you know, to, to get more people to look like myself in the profession, we needed to start young, right? And that started at the high school level. So this program is geared for high school students to introduce them to accounting and finance. Uh, it's a week-long program. I would say pre-pandemic. It's a pre um, uh, Pre-pandemic, it was on site at a local university where students learn about accounting. They actually toured accounting firms uh, or a, um, a private industry, a corporate office, just to kind of say, these are what accountants are, right? Part of it is image. And, you know, I always like to say, I like to bring sexy back to accounting. And one of the things I will highlight that is really that we do, I think is pretty powerful is with the ACAP program, one in St. Louis, we brought in the controller for the St. Louis Cardinals. And what that did was it opened the eyes of the students to say, wait a minute, you mean I can be an accountant and work for an ML MLB team? I was like, yeah, uh, the Indianapolis program, I actually brought in an FBI agent. And, you know, their, their minds were just like, oh my God, you know, this is, this is what I can do with an accounting degree, right? It's the language of business. So, uh, you know, once again, it is our, our effort to get more young people into accounting and finance. Uh, the next slide, please. So we, we talk about student engagement. I, I say that we have over 155 uh, student chapters. We have something that's very powerful that I think is one of the more unique type of uh, events throughout the country for college uh, students, more specifically minority accounting and finance, we have what we call a student conference. Uh, Pre-pandemic, right, I'm gonna talk, always talk pre-pandemic and during pandemic. Pre-pandemic, um, our organization is broken up into regions. We have four different regions. Each region would always hold what we call a student conference in the fall. Well, we would bring in uh, like in the Eastern region, for example, we bring in about 600 plus minority accounting and finance majors to a particular hotel to learn not only about accounting and how to pass a CPA exam, but more importantly, provide scholarships and internship and full-time staff positions. In each region, we will probably have between 40 and 50 companies attend. Uh, I, I will tell you that during the pandemic, we held our first ever virtual college student event where we held over 1,300 uh, minority accounting and finance students attend and conducted, I'm going to say this, and I think this is very powerful, we conducted over 700 interviews virtually for our students and gave over $100,000 in scholarships, uh, once again, to get more people that look like us in a profession. Uh, next slide, please. You know, so as, as we you know look to go on to the to the next slide is there are so many different programs that we have, uh, not only for students but for for professionals. So with that, you know, I want to kind of 
pass it off to Tammy to talk, you know, what does NABA do on the local level? And then I'm going to circle back up to talk more big picture with FBI. So with that, Tammy, I will hand it over to you. Thank you, Herschel. Um, thank you so much for inviting me to speak here today. It's nice to see just even in the, the chat to see some names that I am familiar with. Um, so nice to see all of you. Um, just to take up where Herschel left off in terms of talking about NABA, you know, the Twin Cities chapter was established in 1980 and we have approximately, um, you know, 100 members between professional members and student members. And um, I'm the second vice president of the local NABA Twin Cities chapter. So some of the things that we've, you know, been involved with is, is mentoring. And so I'm going to just take you through some different opportunities that we've had. And so, you know, as Herschel mentioned, NABA's motto is lifting as we climb. And we really do believe in that um, mission of service, right? Like as you are blessed, you are called to, to serve others and bless others as well. So one of the opportunities, um, you know, recently we've started collaborating with FEI to match mentors with um, students from the NABA um, chapters to provide kind of that leadership and just an opportunity for, um, you know, having someone to lean on as a resource. A lot of times, you know, when we're talking about, um, you know, people who look like me or having that representation, that's really important, um, you know, for the students, because, you know, as we, you know, say, you know, now, you know, if you can't see it, you can't be it. So we really want um, the students and the professionals to really kind of expand their mindset in terms of what's possible. And then how can we help empower and equip them to get there, right? What are the steps that are needed or can be taken um, to help them get there? And so in terms of just aligning with that um, NABA motto, we make sure that we are present and active in the community to do so. And so as Herschel mentioned, you know, one of the other ways that we um, show up in that capacity is through ACAP. And it's that week-long program um, pre-pandemic. We had students um, hosted at the University of Minnesota on, on campus for a week. And during that week, they would visit various companies like Best Buy, Cargill, KPMG um, to spend the day uh, with professionals, take tours, understand um, really what um, the accounting and finance profession looks like at the, those organizations. And then as, um, as a part of that week-long program, there was also um, a case study competition. So they would be presented with a business scenario. They would get together in small groups of four or five and then work on the case study and present that case study results to not only their peers, but to a panel of, um, of judges and for a scholarship opportunity. And so, you know, just really reinforcing, not just, um, you know, what they saw, but also what they learned, you know, as a part of that opportunity. Herschel also mentioned the, um, the student conferences. So helping to get students prepared, you know, for those career career uh, fairs and opportunities. We really work with students in the, um, in the local chapters to make sure that we are providing um, support services in terms of you know, resume review, mock interviews, um, assisting with you know, introductions um, or um, networking opportunities for them so they get that practice, right? They're putting together their elevator pitch for themselves. And really this is just another way to support and reinforce um, their entree into, you know, the business world. Um, another, and I'm sorry, I'm talking really fast. I should have said, I'm sorry, advance the slides. <laughs> um, you know, one of the other uh, ways that we partner, you know, in the local community is really um, through um, our, our main fundraising event and it's called Salsa Sushi Soul. And we partner with Ascend um, and Alpha um, to throw a benefit to fund our legacy scholarship fund. And so it's really just an opportunity to get together. Um, we usually have, you know, some type of um, auction, um, 
a way to get together, listen to some speakers fellowship and also, you know, have a good time. There's, you know, food, there's music, but really that opportunity to network with other um, organizations with the, within the community. Okay. Um, next slide. Okay, and so, you know, as a way we also continue our community involvement is, you know, we really want to listen and respond to the needs of the community. So, for example, um, you know, last year um, in the aftermath of the George, George Floyd um, killing, we also participated with local businesses to provide um, food and resources to um, communities that were impacted um, and were, let's say, left without, left in a food desert and just, you know, really making sure that we're there to show up and support, um, you know, as, as we're able. So that was one of our key events for last year as well. So with that, I will turn it back over to Herschel. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Thank you. So you can see that you, you know, we are, you know, partnering with not only FEI, but other local community organizations to support the community. Once again, you know, as we talk about lifting as we climb, and we, we take that to heart, is I'm not in the position that I'm at today without people looking out for me and lifting me up and giving volunteering of my time. So if I can only give 10% of what people gave back to me, then I'm all in, right? And, and even having the opportunity to uh, build relationship with individuals within FEI, I've already learned so much. I don't think I've shared this with them, you know, from the Judy's and the Sharadas of just their knowledge level and their dedication helps me develop as a professional as I continue to become a leader. So uh, I'm extremely excited about not only our community involvement, but more importantly, the partnerships. You know, I looked in the chat briefly to say, hey, many people are not as familiar with NABA, and this is a perfect reason why we're having this call, right, is the opportunity to introduce you to NABA and what we can do uh, together with FEI to help support you as an individual as you grow, but also the companies that you lead. Uh, so if we can go to the next slide. Um, and, and this is just more of a, from a geographic standpoint of, of just kind of how we're broken up. You know, we have a Western region, Central region, Eastern, and Southern, once again, we are all volunteers uh, that run these uh, professional chapters, that run these regions. My entire board, uh, we are all, like I say, unpaid uh, employees uh, that love it to death. Um, you know, I always say each year, um, the, uh, the 1040 that I send all my uh, volunteers is a hug because of the commitment and dedication of young people like Tammy, who's our up and coming young leaders, as you can tell, and Orlando who's on as well. Um, it re-energizes me because I see their development uh, as being leaders in their community. Um, the FEI partnership, I would just wanna highlight, and then we can go into questions, wanna be respectful of everyone's time, is it's twofold. One is it is building a foundation that we can support one another from a membership standpoint, an awareness standpoint, awareness that we're there to support our members, but more importantly, we're there to support each other. And one of the ways, a byproduct of that is uh, the mentorship program that we've been kicking off around the country with different FEI chapters. One of the things that we have learned over the years is that you know many of our young people, uh, students, uh, don't get exposure to opportunities with different companies uh, and different career paths in accounting and finance. Uh, so with that is, is mentorship is extremely important. And when we uh, started to reestablish and deepen our relationship with FEI, uh, the mentorship program and pilot uh, kicked off. We're probably, uh, I wanna say not even a, a year into the pilot program, but what it's doing is it's opening up the doors and the eyes uh, of our college students on one, how to develop as a professional, but two opportunities at different companies and organizations and the different paths that we can go. And the FEI members, you know, um, you know, being able to listen to a Judy or a Sharada is so much that they gain 
uh, from a development standpoint, but also hopefully potential uh, opportunities to go work in that particular industry or field. Uh, so we're extremely excited about what the future holds between FEI and NAVA. The other thing that I'm, I'm proud to say is that because of the relationship that we have built with FEI is that, you know, they asked myself as a representative of NAVA to sit on the national uh, DE&I committee of FEI. And it's extremely powerful to, to see a partnership and more specifically an organization like FEI really focusing on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And, and the equity portion is very important, right? Uh, and that, because there is so much that is happening in our communities, I think, you know, I want to make sure we acknowledge uh, my fellow brothers and sisters of the Asian community of what's happening to them is that we all must do our part uh, as leaders uh, because. Uh, more so than ever, life is work and work is life, right? We can't get away from it. And it's important that organizations like NABA and FEI focus on its members who look to us, not only from a technical business development aspect, but also a people support, right? It's important that we as, we as NABA, we as FEI really support our employees and support the communities that we work in and live in. So, with that, you know, once again, I want to be respectful of time and answer questions and looking forward to questions. So Judy. Yeah. Thank you, Herschel. And thank you, Tammy, for your um your 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 leadership and your uh, knowledge about the DNI. And uh, we will continue to work with um, NABA to advance our visions in a in the in the field of professional field in uh, finance. Um Today we have uh, one of uh, distinguished our FEI members, Mark Schwartz, and uh, he is uh, one of our mentors for FEI uh, and the NAPA mentorship program. He is the mentor, and uh, we would like to invite him and have uh, his experience to share with us today. Mark, thank you, Judy, and um, thank you for that term, distinguished. Uh, <laughs> I'll take it where I can get it. Um, so yeah, I am Mark Schwartz. I'm the CFO of uh, Churchill Companies uh, here in Minneapolis. Um, I've been an FEI member for uh, probably coming up on 20 years now. Um, and Judy asked me to kind of talk about my uh, experience with um, the mentorship program and the DEI program uh, that FEI has, has undertaken. Um, so as, as Mary said, um, you know, after the, the killing of George Floyd, um, the Breonna Taylor incident, um, uh, Philando Castile, you know, those, those events just, just make you sick to your stomach. And, you know, I was looking for ways to, you know, what can I do, you know, how, you know, just like a lot of you is, is, is what, what can you do to help, help the situation? Um, you know, I think one really important outcome of that, it, it's brought a lot of, of light and visibility to the, the gaps that exist between minority people and white people in terms of education and wealth and opportunities. And you know, as, as you sit here in my seat is, you know, and as I grow older and my kids get older, I have four children and I, and I was getting to a point where my children are becoming more independent and I had more time in my hands as my coaching career uh, wound down uh, to get more involved in things. And so I was looking for, for ways to get involved. And so those things all kind of married up and I, uh, got a hold of Judy or learned more about Judy and the work she was doing uh, through FEI and the DEI program. And she let me know about the mentorship program that they were starting with um, NABA. And uh, I said, well, that seems like a pretty good idea. Um, let's, let's give it a shot. So Judy um, hooked me up with um, Tim. Um, Tim is a sophomore at the University of St. Thomas. He, uh, he is interested in private equity, uh, investment, uh, investment banking, mergers and acquisitions, 
Um, and Judy thought it might be a good chance for me and him to get together since Churchill Companies, the company I work for, uh, we're not a private equity firm, but we are we own seven different operating companies. We do a lot of M&A work. Um, and Judy was right. I mean, it has been, it's been a great uh, experience for me. Um, Tim is um, very curious, very courteous, um, really a good kid, energetic. He, he asks a lot of great questions. Um, I meet with him uh, about every four to six weeks. We just started this program last fall, kind of late last fall. So it's still, we're kind of still getting our feet underneath us here. But every four to six weeks for an hour or two, um, you know, with the pandemic, um, it's been mostly over, over calls or Zoom calls. He has been down to the office here. Um, we're, we're located in downtown Minneapolis. Um, he was down here for a while. Um, I've shared a lot of information about the business, what I do, um, you know, kind of take my lead from him about what he wants to talk about. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, been, it's been fun to share that with him. Um, besides just that, it's, it's fun to get his viewpoint on life. Um, you know, you, you kind of live a little bit vicariously through the youth of America, and it's kind of my chance to figure out what's going on in, on the college campuses and how he's viewing the world. And it's been really fun. We, we talked a lot about, obviously, school and business and um, a lot about our families and, and different things that are going on. You know, a good example, as I thought about it, is our last meeting, which was about a month ago. Um, that was right in the middle of that GameStop um, situation where there's a big run up in that stock. And um, that was a big, big topic of the day. And, and Tim actually brought it up and wanted to get my opinion on it and what he thought about it and um, how Robinhood stopped trading and all that stuff. And it was a really good discussion. It was, it was good to hear his viewpoint. Um, you know, he had some friends and colleagues that invested in it. And, you know, a lot of that run up was caused by younger people and smaller investors and kind of got into a discussion about Main Street versus Wall Street. And it, it was it was it was a really good conversation. So I enjoyed getting his viewpoint and, and learning more from him. Um, so yeah, lots of topics. I, you know, I, I our, actually our next meeting is tomorrow. So um, looking forward to the meeting with Tim. Um, you know, from a time perspective, like I said, it's probably an hour or two a month. Um, you know, I do spend some time trying to think of, you know, what should we talk about and, and things like that. But a lot of it's just natural conversation and, and Tim always comes with great questions. So it's pretty easy. Um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like work to me at all. It's, it's more fun and, and it's good to talk to Tim and, and learn more from him. Um, you know, one thing we haven't talked a lot about is, is race. Um, you know, I, I'd like to get, learn more about his views on racism and uh, police um, and just the events of, of the world today. Um, I think there needs to be a certain comfort level and trust there. And, you know, I think we're working through that and I'm not sure he wants to talk about that yet either. So, you know, we'll see where that goes, but um, you know, right across the street from me here is, is the, is the trial going on, uh, for, for officer Chauvin. Um, so that might be a way that we, we start talking about tomorrow, but, uh, you know, again, we'll, we'll see where that goes, but, um, overall, it's been a really good experience. I've really enjoyed it. Um, it's, it's fun talking to him. Um, he's getting his resume together. He's, like I said, he's a sophomore, so he's kind of getting right into that process of thinking about where he wants to work and what he wants to do and starting to talk to employers. Um, he's a very motivated young man um, and, and a good kid. And like I said, it's been fun to talk to him. So I would, I would recommend it if you have the time. Like I said, it's not a huge time commitment um, and it's fun to get you know, a different perspective on the world from, from the youth, so. Right. That is a model example of a mentorship, right? It is developing, and it's developing relationship, right? And it's a comfort level that he's learning. And so I appreciate you, Mark, for your, for your time. I would tell you that a young man like that is getting so much out of life by just having a conversation of an hour with you. So just want to acknowledge and appreciate your, your commitment as well. So thank you. Yeah.
Thank you, Mark. And I think a lot of times, you know, we are trying to break up the barriers and, you know, we don't have to, you know, we normally fall into a scenario, we like to be in our own race, you know, voice, I'm minority, I like to be in my own race, feel comfortable. But, you know, going through this experience, you go outside of your comfortable zone, you know, you take the first step, you, you can feel, you can see, oh, you know, if I take that step, I can also open up another perspective, right? And you learn there's, there's more opportunities, there's new ways so we can get along with people or learn more. There's so much opportunities out there. So I think we hope this mentorship is the, the first step. I know I really call on our members, our strategic partners and to, to get hold of me or our board of directors and participate in a mentorship. Really, we, we're trying to build up the, the next generation, you know, professionals with people of color. And I think, you know, um, as probably most people know in this finance world, it's, it's especially in the leadership, you know, finance world is predominated by, you know, particular race. So, I think we are taking actions, you know, uh, this one, you know, today's events was main, mainly focused on, you know, taking actions. So I really want everybody to participate. And um, we, we can move into our Q&A if anyone have any questions. And I think Jay is also, more, oh, there's a polling question. Let's go Ooh. through that. Thank you. I did manage to get a poll up. So um, here's a, another poll and I, I hopefully we'll get through them all. If they don't function, we'll be sure to get your um, CPE to you. Have you ever been a mentor or mentee? Um, your choices are yes, you've been a mentor. Yes, you've been a mentee. No, you haven't been a mentor or a mentee. So I'll give you just a few seconds to answer that last few polls. Um, and please feel free to go right into Q&A, Judy. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, Judy. Um, just want to welcome everybody again. It's been a great event. I feel very inspired, um, much more inspired than at the beginning. So I think from that perspective, it's been a successful meeting for me. And uh, Mark, I think I'm going to follow up with you on uh, your experience there as a mentor. Um, uh, I've been a long time FEI board member, not quite as long as George Biagis, everybody knows George. Um, but I am working this year, uh, probably for the last year and a half now, uh, one of the projects I'm working on with uh, FEI Twin Cities is building strategic alliances with other associations and organizations. Um, this is new, we've been kind of a captive organization, I'll call it, but we've decided strategically it's time to reach out and do more with others. So that's, uh, that's what I'm working on. We did have some questions come in. Um, some people know my email address, so I've been getting, getting them directly um, as well. Um, uh, first one, and I'll just open this up, Mary, Orlando, anybody on the call uh, in these organizations, how can students find out about internships with minority owned businesses? Um, I'll just leave it at that. If any of any of you have some thoughts, can it be just thoughts or connections? That's fine too. I think I will, I will kind of lean towards um, the MBG A as far as from a minority standpoint. I would tell you we at NAVA, we are uh, our corporate partners across the country are always looking for interns, uh, and, and it ranges, you know, uh, based on you know, industry, uh, skill set, you know, uh, some are minority owned, but, you know, we partner with a lot of corporate partners uh, that are looking for internships. So you can re reach out directly to NAVA. Uh, we can point you in a direction, uh, but that's, a, at, that's at a national as well as a local NAVA level. I don't, Orlando, I don't know if you want to add anything to that more. Sure. More. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so Orlando Bryant, uh, president for NAVA Twin Cities and Thank you guys again for having us on the call today and great job by all the speakers. Um, so yeah, for, for us locally here in the, in the Twin Cities, we do have uh, really great relationships with uh, a lot of the Fortune 500 companies here, as well as some of the um, smaller organizations and also some of the state and local governments as well. Um, so we do, we are able to um, receive those inquiries from 
Mary or from other FBI professionals, et cetera, to help funnel those, those opportunities to our partners. And those are the ones that have those opportunities for internships. So we're able to broker or bridge the gap for students to the internship opportunities at various organizations. So and we do that very often. And I know for our relationship with uh, FBI, that started. I want to say probably four years ago, maybe four or five years ago, uh, which was mentioned previously, our Salsa Sushi Souls, our premier um, spring um, fun fundraising event. And George, he was definitely the, the spearhead um, from the FBI side to, to get us involved with what, to get involved with what we're doing, but also being able to share our networks with each other. So since then we've um, attended various events um, on the FBI side as well as NABA side, and just continuing to build that relationship and now with Herschel leading the um, um, initiative for the national Men mentorship program that the FBI is great as well. So. And for Minority Business Growth Alliance, we don't have we have we don't have internship programs yet, but it's an intriguing idea. Um, certainly, a volunteer that maybe would want to get engaged in that capacity and do an internship with one of our minority business that would be a huge amount of help and service to to our clients. So. Absolutely interested. If, if uh, someone has some ideas about that, please do reach out. I think that would be terrific. Thank you all. Um, question came in for Mary. It looks like you have five to six businesses per cohort and two co cohorts. Do you have a goal of the number of cohorts you're trying to establish? Um, and are you taking referrals um, to or for other business startups? Um, we are, that, great questions. Um, we absolutely are looking to form new cohorts. And I don't necessarily think we have a goal. Um, a part of our challenge as a new organization is to be able to balance supply and demand of volunteers and, you know, making sure everybody has an opportunity to get engaged and making sure every business that comes to us is supported. Uh, we typically work with nonprofits that that have businesses that are already established. So one of our goals is to work with businesses who are beyond the startup phase, uh, who have actually established a business, who have some track record, who have some uh, some some road under their uh, their feet by this time. Uh, based on the kinds of uh, professionals that we've been able to attract, we think this is a really good fit. Uh, because they can really, they're at the point where they can really accelerate and they're not just in the ideation, like maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't, how should I start this business up? So that's a little bit about us, but yes, if you have a, um, if you have a business that sounds like that, let us know. Uh, like I said, we typically like to work through nonprofits that do some of this vetting, but if you have a good feeling about someplace and you, and you know, they'll be right. Uh, I'm always happy to meet them. Thank you. Uh, one came in for Tito. What is a zone meeting? What is a what? A zone meeting? I is don't, I'm not sure. Okay. Zone meeting? Do you mean, did you mean to say Zoom meeting maybe? Maybe that's oh, what he was saying. I, I'm not sure. Right? I just took the question. Maybe it came across <laughs> as zone. But can you explain, maybe uh, just talk about your team, Tito, like, um, who, who from the association uh, makes up your team and how do you work with your individual team of consultants? Are you talking about with MBGA? Yes. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> uh, Katie, Katie Walter, uh, I talked about her. Uh, she was the one that was paired with me. And I guess, you know, I'm assuming, and, and Mary, you can help me, uh, you know, fill in the blanks where, where I'm leaving out. Uh, so in, initially when we got started, you know, uh, there was a couple people that, you know, they kind of went through like a Q and a, you know, we put together, they put together a zoom meeting and just kind of asked me some questions about my business and <clears throat> what I wanted to do, you know, what was my vision moving forward. So they paired me with Katie Walter, I guess, based on her experience, her experiences and what I, what I had shared with them. So is, is there anything I'm leaving out, Mary? No, I think what, one of the things that was pretty phenomenal for us is that we knew we needed a lot of quality processes uh, that, you know, how do you, how do you accurately understand what these business needs are and, and what's the most important thing to work on? And then how do you really understand the volunteer pool and the skill sets that they bring? And I'm just really proud of, we have some really uh, experienced professionals that said, oh yeah, we do this. This is part of what I do as a living. Let me help you with this. 
And so we had a really great, uh, right out of the gate, a very thorough, I mean, we're still learning, but a very thorough process of, of taking Tito and his business through a kind of a needs analysis. What's most important? What's a pain point for you? What are your ambitions? How are you measuring success? How do you uh, react to competition? How different are you? What's your unique value proposition? All of that stuff is really part of how we try to get to know all of our client businesses so that we can really zone in on how they want to grow and offer them the skills and, uh, and resources that would help. Thank you. Uh, last question that I have uh, came in, um, Tammy, what local events are taking place uh, and do you need sponsorships for any upcoming events? Oh, well, thank you so much. Um, actually, we do have um, some events coming up and I'm going to actually direct that to Orlando um, as to which one specifically, but also that you can always find um, you know, our events on our local um, website and that keeps, kind of keeps track of um, you know, what we're up to up to the minute. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, we do have uh, one coming up and actually the planning process of that now. Um, it's an event for uh, Allianz is one of our partners. So we're working with them as well as Thomson Reuters, KPMG and Ernst & Young. And it's going to be a discussion, panel discussion um, on robotic process automation, learning how the organizations have developed their internal RPA programs, um, determining or understanding how they um, got to that initial infancy stage to their ev evolution to date how their organizations are benefiting from RPA, but also how customers or end users are also benefiting from RPA processes. And then from the um, audit side, KPMG and Ernst & Young, um, gonna explain how they're able to work with their clients to audit those RPA processes uh, to make sure that there's um, certain risk and controls in place in, in that. So, so yeah, that's coming up. I believe we're gonna have that in May. But like I said, we're still on the, pro the, the planning process for that with all of our our executives are going to be a part of that, um, that discussion. And then aside from that, we are also um, working with um, um, another organization here locally um, to do an event with students. He's a graphic designer artist. So we want to try and um, bring in the ability to identify artists or students that are very art centric, but then have the, the, the relationship and the connection with them to help them learn more about business, accounting, finance, IT, et cetera. So that's another thing that we're gonna be planning here for the summertime, hopefully in person versus uh, virtual. Um, and then uh, we're still determining our Salt Solution Soul event. So we typically we hold, held that um, in person at a nice location here in the Twin Cities. And that's uh, just a celebration for diverse talent here locally. But the bigger part of that is the fundraising aspect of it. And that's where we've been able to over the last five years now, um, um, generate a pool of, of funds over $80,000 to provide back to our, our um, college students, um, undergrad and graduate students that are minority students and have that selection process they go through, receive scholarships, et cetera. So we're still trying to see if we actually wanna hold that this year or possibly in the fall as, as things continue to progress with, um, or should say improve with the coronavirus um, uh, issues that we're, we're currently experiencing. Aside from that, we are also thinking of hosting a like summer barbecue. I'm trying to figure out still seeing the, the post pandemic era and seeing how the social distancing is gonna affect that or impact that and making sure that we're very conscious of working with our sponsors. But we, what we wanna do is um, try and bring in the professionals at our sponsors sites, as well as members from the community and our current NABA members that are black, that are um, um, diverse professionals to come as well as the other um, white white professionals up within the organizations to have those networking opportunities, make a new friend, uh, develop potential pipeline for an experienced professional to come join the organization in the future as well. So that's another thing we're thinking about, as well as ACAP. ACAP is going to be a virtual event this year, as it was last year. So again, we'll host that um, virtually and just being able to um, um, invite our students here locally, as well as students from across the United States to that event. So, a couple things in the pipe. Well, yeah, just like a Cam few. Said, Stay, uh, <laughs> stay connected to our, our website and that's where we'll be posting our um, upcoming events okay. for you guys all to be a part of them. So. And Jay, that's you know just more of a highlight in, in partnership with FBI, that's the, the great opportunities that NAVA is here as a resource uh, on, on various levels, one from a technical aspect, you know, what is the latest going on? You know, obviously robotics, uh, 
is big in the accounting and finance industry and how that's being used in our world. So we'd like to, you know, definitely highlight that. But also, in addition to that, is be a sounding board, you know, for organizations and companies of, you know, this is what we're doing within our organization from a DEI standpoint. Uh, but what are you seeing? And, you know, we're lucky, you know, with under Orlando's leadership, you know, as you can see locally, you know, what are other organizations doing to be successful from a DEI standpoint in the areas of accounting and finance? So, you know, not only with the mentorship, but also use us as a resource to help support you and your organization as you guys go down this journey. Um, and so once again, you know, really appreciative of the opportunity to speak to you guys, um, you know, for this event. Thank you, and uh, be respectful of time here. I will point to the chat. Our friend Steve and our friend George have questions out there. And perhaps while we close, um, you could help them out or uh, find a way to connect them with the answers afterward. Uh, we just, uh, I believe we're running up against the time stop here. So Judy, it's all yours. Okay, thank you, Jay. Thank you everyone to join us today. We really gain a lot of insight and most of all, we call everyone to, to help us to promoting the DEI and take actions and join us for the mentorship or send me all your uh, ideas, suggestions to me so I can do better job here and help the minority help our organization to grow. So until next time, be well, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone, for your patience with the polls. If you did not get a poll, um, please let me know via the chat. Um, we did have issues, so I'm assuming anybody who answered yes on the first poll will uh, immediately get the CPE credits. Um, and we do apologize for that inconvenience. Thank Just you, Nancy. The yes? Thank you, Nancy. See you. Thank you. Have a wonderful afternoon. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.